come on. I'm at all in the moment. You know, I said last Sunday that we should be ready for the Lord to do things and not be at all at it. So I don't... I said that last week, no, not being in the position that I am right now, because I'm ready to see the Lord do things that uh, Amen. we would know only God done them. Amen. So, uh, but anyway, let me, uh, <clears throat> hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. I want to talk to you for a few moments uh, about a couple of things that the Lord, I just, I felt, there was two words that that I was just uh, I started with, and uh, hallelujah, let me get that right there. Just a that I started with last uh, this past week, and the word was consuming fire and stir. And I want to read um, if y'all let me read Hebrews twelve twenty nine. Hallelujah, Lord God, I just praise you. Hallelujah, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'll try not to hold you too long, but I just, uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hebrews 12, 29, and it says, For our God is a consuming fire. And if you went over there to Haggai, I know I'm jumping around, but I'll read one scripture in Haggai. And, uh, you're just good to us. We're going to have a stir. We're going to have church. And, uh, amen. That the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The word says you have not because you ask not. We've been asking for God to do things for us. And it says here in Haggai chapter 1 verse 14, and it said the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shelate, if I'm saying it correctly, and governor of Judea, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest and the spirit of all the remnant of the people, and they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. Let us pray. Lord God, I ask you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, for Lord God, I just, I'm at all, Lord God, what you just done, Lord God. We are a blessed people, Lord Jesus. We are blessed. And I wish the whole world could have seen it, Lord God. And been a witness of it, Lord God. And I thank you so much for it, Lord God. And I thank you for it, Jesus. And Lord, if you just give me a few moments here, Lord, with this word, God, that I can just begin just to shower your people with it, Lord. We've been blessed already, Lord. But Lord, let this word come forth, Lord God. Let it instill in our hearts, Lord God. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost, Lord, be abound, Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Anoint your servant and let me preach, Lord, just for a few moments, Lord. I ask it in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, mighty God. You can be seated if you can. And I, I ain't going to hold you long. Huh? I have a testimony. All right, go ahead. So, you guys know Israel? I stand with Israel. You stand with Israel? All right. All right, he's standing with Israel. Hallelujah. Anyway, God's good. Hallelujah. He's mighty, church. Hallelujah. He is mighty. But y'all listen to me for a moment. I, I want to talk to you about a couple things. I want to talk to you about the formal and the personal, if I can if I can get that part across today. Amen. God is a consuming fire. Amen. But there's something, amen, when it becomes personal, amen, that it stirs us up, church. Yeah. Amen. And I want to talk to you for a moment about sheep and about goats, if I can. Amen. That's kind of where I want to land. And I want to talk to you, too, also about the chief priest 
amen, and the scribes and the Pharisees, amen, and the Sanhedrins. And I want to talk to you for a moment, amen, about Jesus, amen, how important it is. Everybody acknowledges, amen, in this world that there is a God, some type of God, some type of a supreme being. And that's what makes it, uh, Sister Karen, so formal, amen, about um, about that relationship it ought to be more personal amen than formal amen and i know that we're supposed to respect amen the creator and what he has done amen but he done something amen when he walked the face of this earth amen and died for our sins to make it more way more church personal than what we we make it today amen he made it to, to where he lives church inside of us amen and that's the thing amen that i want amen for a moment, amen, for us to, I, I'm just overwhelmed, amen, I'm just overwhelmed, brother, bro, I'm just overwhelmed, amen, and, I, and I'll be honest, if we can uh, just be honest for a moment, I, I wanted Samuel to come spend a weekend with us because we had a trip, and, and he didn't want to, and, and my feelings was hurt just a little bit, amen, but I'm I, I blessed, amen, today, amen, and I, I'm blessed, amen, I, I want us to come together and be a family, I want, amen, to see these 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 boys become young men, yeah. amen, and preach the gospel, amen. Yeah. And the Bible says to train them, amen, in the way that they should go, that they should never depart, amen, from the truth, amen. And we're beginning to see that. I know that we're going to have a few that's going to rebel. I know we're going to have a few that, amen, that don't want, amen. But God is going to raise somebody, amen, up that's going to preach his word and live for him, amen. He said he'd get the stones to cry out if that's what it took. But I don't get off my message, amen, because I think it's pretty good today what the Lord gave me to give to us. Amen. John the Baptist, amen, when he said that I come to baptize you with water for the repentance of your sins was a formal thing. Amen. But the Lord, when he came, and you know, that's what he said, that there was one coming mightier, Amen, that I'm not worthy to unlatch your shoes, but he would baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen, when, when Jesus got here and died on the cross uh, and the day of Pentecost got here, amen, and we can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen, this thing all of a sudden got personal, amen, with what we have in the relationship with the Lord. Amen. How personal this thing ought to be. Amen. And I want to, I want to share this with you. Amen. And I pray that it may, I pray that it be an eye opener for you. Amen. Amen. Because there's a difference between sheep and goat. Amen. It's a shepherd that leads sheep. And it's a herdsman that herd up goats, church. Amen. And the Bible said that the Lord said in Matthew 25, Amen. That he would separate these things. He would put the goats on the left and the sheep on the right. Amen. So I want to I want to share this with you. Amen. I ain't gonna hold you long, Sister Karen, but I want you to have this. Amen. About Martha and Mary. Amen. Amen. And look at this. Martha looked at the relationship with Jesus as a formal thing. If you go back and look at the old covenant, amen, him being a prophet in her eyes, because that's what the word says. Amen. Because many said, Amen, about Jesus. When the Messiah comes, will he do what this great prophet could do? Amen. They still looked at Jesus as a formal figure. Amen. But Mary, amen, crumbled. Amen. When Jesus called for her and said, If you would have been here, amen, my brother would not have died. Amen. I need y'all to listen to me just a moment. Amen. When you get into Mark, Chapter 2, as, as Jesus began to heal, amen, they make a comment, amen, at the things that Jesus Christ done. They said, we've never seen it in a fashion like this. And what I'm telling you, Sister Karen, they knew of Elisha and Elijah. They knew of prophets, amen. And I want y'all to understand something. When you know about the Hebrew tradition, the Hebrew folks said that the Spirit can stay in a body up to three days, that's why Jesus waited to the fourth day, amen, to do anything about Lazarus, amen. He wanted to make sure certain sister Karen 
that there was separation between him and Elijah and Elisha. Amen. So what he done, amen, that he done, and it could be no, amen, uh, calling it that it was Elisha or Elijah church. Amen. I want you to ponder for a moment, amen, that if you could just move the Lord, amen, like Mary moved, Jesus let him groan, amen, and said, Lazarus, come forth, amen. Amen. There's going to come a day if we keep this personal. Amen. If we live for Him, Sister Karen, there's going to be a day that comes that, if, that Jesus Christ is going to say, Karen, Audrey Smith, come forth to me. Amen. And we're going to come because He's going to beckon us. My God, in the name of Jesus, yeah, I want you to be liberated today and get out of the funnel of this relationship and get into the personal side of this. I'm telling you something. I want to worship the Lord. Amen. I'm looking for Him to consume me. Amen. And live inside of me. And let me be a fire for Him, church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now think about it. Sometimes, Brother Bo, we got to figure out what side are we on? Are we on the left hand side of the Lord? Are we on the right hand side of the Lord? And I'm going to sound ugly in a minute, but maybe it'll put us all in a place where David was when he said, I was glad when they said, Let us go up into the house of the Lord. We need to get glad to get here. We need to put on the worship, amen. We need to have corporate worship in here. We need to be happy that we've come together in one mind and one accord. Amen. The worship leader ought not have to herd us up, Sister Karen, for a testimony. She ought not have to herd us up as goats, amen, and pressure us, amen, to well the worship, to sing, and, and, and to give testimony. Amen. That is a goat. Amen. The songs ought to be beginning to be played, and people ought to be able to have an audible voice and lift their hands and exalt the Lord and be led of the Spirit and get this thing on a personal level. Amen. That the Spirit of the Lord can move because He said, where the Spirit is, there is liberty. And I want you to understand, just a few minutes ago, Brother Bo, there was a young man up here that had liberty in the Lord. And I need y'all to sit and I don't have to make you want to shout. I'm not going to be no goat. Amen. I ain't going to be no goat. I ain't going to be herded into worship. I'm not going to be herded up. Amen. To be pushed up here to be prayed for. Knowing that the power of God can do something for me. I'm going to lift my hands. Amen. That I'll be liberated. That I'll be led up here. Yeah. That I'll be led to open my mouth and sing to Him. Sister Karen, that I'll be led to lift my hands up and not be embarrassed. Amen. That I'll be led to have a special and exalt the Lord and sing in public in front of folks' church. I'm not going to be hurted because I want this thing personal. I want that consuming fire, amen, in the pit of my soul, amen, that I make this personal, amen, that I please my Lord. Let me give this to you real quick. I want you to think on this for a moment. I wrote a few notes here, now. I'll give them to you real quick. I know I, I write things down, but I I wanted I, I wrote here about the man just how that temple just the politics behind it. You got a high priest, you got the scribes, you got the Sadducees, the Sanhedrins, and the Pharisees church all in that temple. You got the Pharisees is kind of like the church body. The Sanhedrin, amen, are your judges and your officers. We know that in the court system. 
You sowed your seeds, amen. That's your corrupt bunch, Sister Karen. That's the ones that's got the money that's going to church. Them is your influencers. Them's the ones that everybody's scared to death if they don't put the coin in the in the in the offering plate, amen. They ain't gonna be able to function. Amen. Then you got your scribes, your lawyers, amen, that, that write, amen, the law, amen. They can that can can write and draft up the documentary, amen, and interpret the law. And then you got the high priest uh, that, 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 that executes, uh, amen, whatever decision, amen, they come up with, church. I want you to listen to that for a moment. How many times that changes hand? Amen. I want you to understand the reason why Jesus got upset and pushed and kicked over the money changers. Amen. As they begin to buy the sacrifice. Amen. Instead of going out and working for the sacrifice. I need you to understand, Sister Carrie, by the time, amen, that the New Testament come along, that when Jesus got here and began to walk the face of the earth, amen, I want y'all to understand this for just a moment. If you can get this, there was more blind folk there was more leprosy there was more demon possessed there was more crippled people amen because the burnt ashes that were supposed to heal the burnt ashes that were supposed to deliver the burnt ashes that were supposed to sanctify were tainted amen by money being bought doing business in the church amen because it got formal instead of personal and keeping it sacred amen before the Lord amen that's why Jesus as he healed he said go stand in front of the priest and let them give you a clean bill of health because they know that the ashes outside that they want you to use is not effect anymore because it's been tainted church I'm telling you I don't want this formal I don't want my relationship in a distance I want it personally close I need that consuming fire amen inside of me church Think about it. Sister Karen, you don't live with a stranger. I can't expect the Lord to live with one. Mom. You won't let one in your house, you just talked about that. You can't expect if the Lord don't know this, he's not going to live here. Right. Come on, somebody. If you want to keep it afar off like the children of Israel, you'll die in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Amen. May catch you worshiping Moalek in the back 40 somewhere. Uh -huh. I'm telling you something. This thing is a consuming fire. Yeah. Amen. It ought to stir you up. Amen. When you begin to look in the book of Acts, this is what I wrote. Amen. I've got some scriptures here. You can write them. It don't matter. You can find this. It's simple. But in Acts chapter 6 and 12, Acts 12, 18, 13 and 50, 14 and 2, 17 and 13, 17, 16, 19 and 23, 21 and 27, church. Amen. This is where Paul and Peter both was stirring up the churches, amen, with the Holy Ghost, amen. It made some mad and it made some glad, amen. And I just have to believe that today, mama. Amen. That there's going to be some that's going to be mad about this apostolic movement. But there's going to be some that's going to be glad because they want, amen, a personal relationship. Amen with the Lord. And Paul even wrote for you and I in 2 Timothy 1 and 6. And Peter wrote it in 1 13. Amen. In 3 and 1. Amen. That he, Peter said he would stir it up. Amen. For your remembrance of who Jesus was and the Spirit was. Amen. And Paul said to stir up the gifts that is inside of you. Amen. To let everybody know that there is a living God and He still dwells and He dwells in us, church. I just want to share that with you. Amen. I wrote here to start with Monday, Brother Bo, this is just days of stuff that I write, but in Monday I wrote here, Sister Karen, are they looking for you? Are they looking for you? I went back to that setting in the Bible. 
In 1 Kings, when Jeroboam was made king, you remember, of the ten tribes, and he got crooked. And you remember he had the son that becomes sick, looking at death. And I believe the guy's name, the prophet back then, his name was Ananiah, I believe. And Jeroboam told his wife, said, I need you to dress up different. The Bible said that the prophet done got old and couldn't see, Sister Carrie, but the Holy Ghost was still in him. This is the awesome thing. And he said, I need you to go down there and you take all these gifts, amen, and you give them to him, you flower him, you woo him, that he would... He would heal our son is, is, the, is, the, is putting it just short term. But the Bible said as she loaded up the, the mule and the donkeys and began to head that way that the Spirit of the Lord told her. that prophet said the king's wife is coming. Amen. To try to fool you in disguise as another woman. Amen. That you'd have compassion on Jeroboam's sin. That you'd have compassion. They're trying to hide. Amen. Him putting up the, the groves of idols. Amen. And letting the people worship it instead of going to Jerusalem. Amen. Like I wanted them to go and worship. Amen. Though I put him over the ten tribes. Amen. He put fear in his heart. Thinking, amen, that the Rehoboam was going to get some of these tribes. Though I I spoke it and my word is infallible. Amen. I need you to listen to a moment. And the Bible said as soon as her feet hit the doorway of, 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 of that prophet's tent. Amen. The Bible said the prophet said Jeroboam. Amen. The wife of Jeroboam. Why would you try to deceive God? Amen. In your time of despair. Knowing that your son is on the deathbed. Why would you make a gamble like this, amen and just because of your foolishness, God will take the child's life, go tell Jeroboam, he can't fool God amen, you can't live this thing at a distance, what I'm trying to preach to you today, church amen, I'm trying to get people stirred up, amen, not to wave at God, but to embrace this thing, and get it inside of you, that you may have consuming fire, that you can do a work for the Lord, church that they'll believe, amen, that you're not living a lie or you're preaching a lie, amen. But they will come and seek out I'm not being ugly, I'm just being honest. There's some Rahabs in the world. And when you show up, Brother Bob, they need to say, we've heard of your God. Come on, somebody. Amen. We've heard of your God. Amen. Amen. Just like when Jonah said, I am a Hebrew. Amen. Everybody around said, we heard of your God. Amen. They need to know. Amen. They need to know. They need to be seeking us out. Amen. For truth. Amen. They need to see our walk, Brother Bo. Amen. They need to know without a shadow of doubt when we speak. Amen. Who we serve today, church. <clears throat> I want you to write this down if you will and, and go back and read this Nehemiah 6 through 14 through 19 I'd like for y'all to go back and probably just need to read chapter 6 it'd do you good in Nehemiah but stay focused on 14 through 19 And the reason I say that, I want you to listen to me a moment. Because this is what Nehemiah prayed. But you go back and read it for yourself. He was praying and he said, Lord, you remember them. Right. Mm -hmm. You remember. Right. You remember, told me. You remember, sent about it. You remember all of them. It hindered us because they was in the middle of worship and getting all this done. You remember them and see what the Lord done. Yes. I'm telling you something, church. If he'll move back then for a prophet, 
you know, move for us today. Yes. That hindrance is what I'm talking about. Yes, Absolutely. Come on, somebody. Yes. These things that's hindering folks, mm -hmm. we need to pray that Lord, remember what's hindering them. Right. Yes. Come on, somebody. Amen. And dissolve that thing. Yes. Let them know we served you. Yes. Amen. The king said we could do this and we're going to do it. Amen. You provided us a way. Amen. And so if you want to get liberated, if you want to get some victory, amen, read that. Amen. How Nehemiah, amen, with one hand, had the sword in one hand and they had a block, amen, in the other. Amen. And they refused, amen, not to build the walls. Amen. They refused not to put the gates back. They refused, amen, not to worship. Amen. They refused not, amen, to bring the tithes back in to the house, the goods. They refuse not to set order back in the temple church and anoint the priests like they should be. They refuse, amen, and I got a book and you may want to borrow it about the Ezra fast, amen, as Ezra went as they begin to build that. I don't know if y'all know all the story or not, but Ezra went back and went and got the people, amen, as Nehemiah was building, amen, and he brought them people, amen, through the enemy camps, Amen. And they fasted, amen, Brother Bo, until they got to where the Jerusalem was. Amen. To where the walls were secure and they walked in, church. I'm telling you something, amen. It's time that we pray. Lord, remember the things that's hindering them that they can't have victory in this. Amen. This, this needs to be personal and not formal, church. It's time. It's just time, church. I want to see God's hand move. Yes. And He's moving. Yes, He is. And He said, I will work. But who will let me? Yeah. Who will let me? I will work, but who will let me? Yeah. Let's stand. Amen. If you ain't got nothing to shout about, you go home. I wish we'd have recorded them up and put